Well, Keswick started um, pencil making really because graphite was discovered here. Over time it obviously expanded throughout this country, there were quite a few pencil mills, but really this is where pencil manufacture actually started, so it all started here. The story goes that in the 1500s there was a large storm in the Borrowdale Valley and shepherds went out to tend their sheep and when they went out they found a tree on their land that had fallen over and underneath its roots was a large black substance. Um, over time they decided to wrap thin pieces of sheepskin around it um, with hand carved pieces of graphite and those were the original primitive pencils I suppose. Um, the first graphite mine was at Seathwaite the graphite was quite easily transported into Keswick and it was a natural hub where people and families actually lived and pencils could quite easily be made within the cottage industry. So that industry grew and grew. In 1832 the first pencil factory was established just by the River Greeter but in 1912 pencil production had grown so much that this purpose-built factory was actually made. It was fantastic in its heyday but technology's moved on so far that we really needed a purpose-built building to be the best it possibly could for pencil manufacture going into the future. I lived in Keswick um, and I came to Cumberland Pencils in 1984. I've seen a lot of changes over the time in the different ways we process things and the different ways we make things. It's a change for the better is coming here because everything flows in a line. It's lighter, it's brighter, it's cleaner. But yeah, it's, it's far better here than it was at Keddie. It's, it's black and white. This is the tun bag that holds the clay, main ingredient of most of our products. We have the uh, pigments that also go in the mixes, the various colours. They're all combined and then added to the uh, mixer and then they add the required amount of water. We need the water to form the paste to make the pigments and the gums develop and then once it's formed the paste the moisture we take off is by heat and vacuum. We just take the mixed temperature up to about 70 or 80. I'll open another one up down here and you'll be able to see the blades and we drop it into these large grey boxes. come from mixing, this goes in, I make the billet out of it. It be coming up now, and that comes like from six feet under the ground there. Eh? One billet. Uh, well, this is the extrusion process. We call it pressing. What it's doing at the minute is it's just pushing the main piston in. Just a bit of oil to try and get it to stop sticking to the drum. Well, now that they're in your cans, and they've got the chalk on. Just leave them to roll until all the strips have straightened out. And then once you start seeing this nice honeycomb effect here with, with no gaps in, then they're ready to go into the oven. We'll get a blue box full of strips like this after they've came out of the oven and they come with an order sheet which will tell us which type of wax to put it in. The left row here, that's uh, for strips that we want the colour to run out of, like watercolours or ink pen strips. The ones on the right row, they're for graphite. And over on this side, so that's we want strips to be softer, for like colour softer, that sort of strip. Tins need to be quite tight, so no strips fall into the wax. So we just need the wax to absorb into the inside of the strips. It takes about two to four hours. It's definitely voted out the best job I've ever had. It's the only job I've ever had where I'm working away and then people will come up to us and say, it's break time, you're not yeah. clock watching whatsoever, you know. So this one's ready to come out now. Tins on the side just for a couple of seconds so that all the wax runs off. And we'll place the tins then in the centrifuge. You have to dispense the weight equally. Okay, 
just spend the mistake and then it will spin all the wax off the strips. Okay, so the centrifuge is finished, so we'll just take out these tins. I'm going to box these up so they're ready for woodwork. So we're looking for 4 kilogram exactly in weight here. Yeah, th then we'll take 10 to 15 strips and send them down to the lab just to make sure that they're a suitable sort of texture and shade. In the labs we do, we do quality checks on all of the products that go through the factory. We test for the toy safety regulations. Um, we also do research and development and we invent all of the new products in here. This is the quality control lab. And each batch comes from the factory and is checked for colour and texture against the standard pencil that we keep in these drawers. We check each batch again for strength to make sure that when people sharpen them they're not going to be brittle. This is the process we use to check out um, incoming raw materials such as pigments to make sure that the shade's correct and compare it on our colour computer. I've worked for Joan for 27 years. I was around when the Queen came to visit. I um, actually shook hands with her and Prince Philip. That wasn't the first time I'd seen her because I went actually down to the palace when we got the Queen's Award. Solvents are harmful for the environment and we wanted to get rid of those so I developed a UV curing process. Oh gosh, yes, there's, a, there's a massive difference. The lab at Keswick was very old. It was a bit like a corridor. It was long and thin. And this one is purpose built and it's, you know, it's got all the real gear in. <laughs> it's lovely, yeah. Uh, this was from California Cedarwood and as you can see it comes in bundles so you just take the bundles off and it gets slid under the AVN. This is where they put the, the mess and grooves. So I'll come out here for the glue I'm ready for the leads to be deposited in the wheel. Well basically, the art of the machine um, compresses them to get RF which um, sets the glue so it's nice and solid then spits it out of here, come along here then goes through the sander machine comes through here which is the shaping machine this machine is 9 ply, the one over there is 8 so 9 pencils out of this side, come through as a board our individual pencils what we're looking for is the centres, make sure they're all even, smoothness and the length. And after there, they get bundled and send them through where they'll get painted. Right, the pencils arrive from woodwork and we've got the bundles, we put them in the hopper. From the hopper they'll go through the paint pot. The paint pot's got water-based paint and from there they'll move along the conveyor belts they'll just work their way all the way down onto the middle one right through the bottom one from the bottom one they'll come through on these little lifts up the top of here right the first coat's now done so now we're going to slide up the first quarter pencils back into the hopper and start for the second coat come from the water-based painting line. Through the tubes into this pot full of heated clear lacquer, then it goes through the light, which is an ultraviolet light, which cures the lacquer instantly, then come down this conveyor into the back of the stamping machine. I lived in Keswick um, and I came to Cumberland Pencils in 1984. My dad made me come. It's my dad's fault and I've worked my way up through doing the different jobs to being a deputy manager. This slide um, puts an end round on, which is like a little dome, then moves into another hopper where it gets the imprinted description stamped onto the pencil. This is one of the foils that we use. This is for the ink tens pencil and that gives you a coloured imprint on your pencil. These are the dyes that we use for the different pencils. This is the main dye for a Durban ink tent. And all we do is add the colour dye on the end of to what is the colour of the pencil. 
So after the imprint, the pencils move up another conveyor and then they roll across a drum of sandpaper which then puts the point on the pencil. Once the pencils have been painted, the ends are seal dipped in a UV lacquer. They then pass through a lamp which cures the lacquer and then they're taken into dipping. I've worked here 30 years, just 30 years last April. We dipped four boards at a time and put on the first coat, the silver lacquer. They then go into the next tank and they dip whatever colour matches the strip. And if the tank comes down too quickly, the paint will just run off the ends. So the viscosity and the tank speed is very important. And then after we've dipped them in the colour, we then take them, put them in the hot box at 40 degrees. Once they've had one hour in there, we unload them and they're going to box in. I've been here eight years now. As you can see, the facilities we've got here are a lot better than we had at Keswick. Things run a lot more smoother. And basically what happens, my job, entails I get the pencils that come through from the end of the production line, um, put them away onto the shelves, and then in the morning I'll get a picking list off David, a line manager telling me which pencils we've got to be getting out for the girls to pack on the conveyor. Well, this is the boxing area where all the finished pencils are passed through. We pack them into the finished tin or box, ready to be sent out to the customers. Well, I moved up to Cumbria in 2005 and I started with Dermot as a temp. And the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> I enjoy working here because you get a variety of jobs. Here we have the blister packing machine. This is a refill packing machine. Packs pencils into cartons and prints barcode labels on them. The finished product goes into what we call the pick and pack area. The customer's orders then selected to send out to the customer some of the countries and places that we send items to. It's quite surprising and it surprises me all the time how many pencils, how many different varieties that there are. I think it gives people more faith in their own country if things are made at home, rather than sending it out to other countries all the time. And it's good, I mean, I, I like working for the factory, you know, because it's a home product and uh, I'm proud to be part of it.